Welcome back to this video. In the previous video in this series, we added functionality to write data to the Firebase database and get it from there. And we recognize that in our app, we can create a new meetup even though we're not signed in. Now in this video, we'll fix this. Actually, here's one thing you can see. In the Dev Firebase console on the real-time database tab or area here, you see that the default security rules require users to be authenticated. And they do here under rules. This basically reads as you're only able to write and read data if you're authenticated. Watch my video with Abe from the Firebase team to learn more about rules and how they work. So basically I can tell you that only authenticated users are able to read or write. But we aren't authenticated in our app and still were able to do so, right? How's that happening? That happens because we use the Firebase SDK and behind the scenes when we write data or read data with the Firebase SDK, it will send a token which is stored in our local storage when we do sign in to the server, to the Firebase servers. And since we did sign in in previous videos and I still have a valid token in my local storage, you can by the way check, check this if you go to application, local storage, and then click on your domain. Here you see Firebase is managing some keys for me, some data. So I have tokens here and that is why Firebase indeed does send them to the backend and I am authenticated. We just don't see that here. And I also would want some protection here on the front end to make sure that I can't do that if I am not signed in. There's a super easy way we can make sure that I'm not even able to click or to go to the organization page here if I'm not signed in. And that is a guard. We can use a route guard to make sure that whenever I try to visit this page and I'm not authenticated, I'm not able to write here. So with that, what I can do is I can create a new guard in my application. I'll do this in the router folder because it is routing related. And here I will create a off guard.js file. Now this is simply a function I want to export or it holds a function which takes three arguments to, from and next. The view router enforces us to have these three arguments in that function because we will use that function together with a view router route in a second. So this is just an arrow function here but in the end a normal function and in there to refers to, to the route we want to go to, from to the one we're going or we're coming from. And next simply means this is a function we can execute to allow the router to continue. We can also execute it as a function and pass a URL we want to redirect to. All I want to do is I want to check if we got a user in our store. So if in our store we got a user, now you're wondering where's store coming from can just import store from the store folder and therefore from the index.js file there. So that's the store we're managing. It's the same store we're using in the rest of the application. So if we got a user here, we are authenticated. In this case, I wanna continue. I'm just calling next, which means continue with what you planned to do, which is probably visit some route. But if we don't have a user, I also call next, but I pass slash sign in, which basically redirects the request to the slash sign in route, which is of course the route here. Now to use that guard, I stay in my index.js file in the router folder where I have all the routes set up. And I wanna use it on this meetups new page. It's super simple to add it. All I have to do is add a new property to that route configuration, which is called before enter. And here I want to execute my off guard. So I need to import that. I'll import my off guard from the dot slash off guard JS file without the file extension as with all the other imports. So here before enter just takes off guard and keep in mind off guard just imports the default export, which is just this function. That's all. With that, I'm protecting this route and I'm also copying this 
to the profile page, which I also only want to be able to visit if I am authenticated. With that, if I go back to my Firebase application, Meetup, click on Organize, you see I'm redirected to sign in. But if I do sign in, like this, I click on Organize, now I'm able to go there. However, as I mentioned, technically we are signed in because Firebase is storing that sign information here. So we could still send valid Firebase requests. So why do we force the user to sign in again if we already are signed in? There's no need to do so. So let's make this a bit easier. In our application in main.js, it would be nice if we had some way of logging the user in if he already is logged in, if we do have that uh, token stored in local storage. What we can do is we can add a new listener in here. For that, I need the Firebase SDK, which I'm already importing. So I'm adding Firebase, accessing the off feature set, and here we get the on off state changed method. This will be triggered whenever, well, the authentication status changes. And Firebase will check for a valid token being present automatically. It will give us access to the user then. So this will be executed by Firebase automatically if it detects that, well, either we signed in actively or that it detects uh, a valid token is already present at the startup. So what we can do is here, we can check if user is anything else but null, because this will also trigger if we log out, but then user will be null. So only if the user is not null, so if we find a valid user, only in this case, I want to dispatch a new method. And I don't have that yet method yet, but I will name it auto sign in, and I will pass the user to this action. Now, as you might guess, auto sign in has the goal of automatically signing in a user who already has the credentials or the token actually stored in local storage. So I'll go to my store next. And here under all these actions below the sign in action, maybe I'll add auto sign in. Here I expect to get my commit method and payload, which is the user if we call this action as we saw a second ago. And here I then want to commit set user and pass my user ID will be payload UID because this payload is a user object passed back by Firebase. It holds a user ID and I will set registered meetups to an empty array. That's all for now. With that, if we save this, let's see if it works. If we reload this application, you see, we get locked in automatically. The items here in the menu changed. Of course, the same is true for our responsive menu. So this is now working. Now we're signing the user in automatically, but we're also making sure that if the user is not signed in, we can't create a new meetup. To demonstrate this, I also want to add a log out button so that we are able to, well, log out. And I will do this in the app.view file where we manage the menu. Here, we manage the menu with two arrays, as you can see, and all these arrays just have links. I don't really need the link for the logout button, so I will make this really easy here. I do loop through my list tiles here, where I have my menu items I'm looping through with all the icons. I'll add one extra list tile here in the responsive menu. This list tile here doesn't need a V4, a key, or a two, it's not a link. Instead, this simply holds an action where I need a fitting icon for logging out. So let's search one. Let's go to icons and there on the material icons page. And now let's uh, pick an icon which looks good for logging out. I'll take this exit to app icon here. So I'll quickly enter this here between the V icon tabs, exit to app and give it a title of logout. And let's do the same inside the toolbar, of course, here where I loop through my toolbar items for my buttons here to be precise. I'll add one extra button where I'll use the flat style. Don't need to loop though, don't need the two directive. Instead here, I'll add the 
exit to app icon with underscores just as before and say log out. Now let's see if that works. If we reload this, get a log out button here. Now for one, I wanna make sure I only see this if I am logged in. So if user is authenticated is true. So let's quickly copy that and add a v if check user is authenticated because only in this case a logout button makes sense, doesn't it? So let's add it here to this list tall to oops, v if user is authenticated, of course. So let's see if I log back in here. Yeah, we didn't see it at the beginning. We'll see it even better once I hook this button up to an action. Let's see if that looks good too. It does. So now let's add an action to this logout button here. So on the list tall here and on my button here, which I added, I'll add a add click listener where I say on logout. So this was added to both elements, also to the list tall on logout. And I need to add this method now. So let's add methods on logout. And in here, I now can go to my store and dispatch the logout method. So I'll just name it logout. We don't have that method yet or this action. So let's add it under actions here. I think it makes sense to add this below auto sign in. So here we have the logout action we may dispatch. Let's add commit here, of course. We don't need a payload. All I wanna do here is I wanna commit set user and set this to null. Well, it's not all I wanna do though. That's all I wanna do when it comes to managing my state. However, I obviously also want to make sure that I access Firebase and access my off features. And here I can simply call sign out to remove this token from the local storage and so on. So now you see auto sign in still working, but if I click log out, I get an error because it makes sense to of course call store with a dollar sign in front of it. So if I go back to my application and I click log out, you see this is gone, but interesting. If I go to application under local storage, you see there are still Firebase values, but it's one less. If I sign in again, you see the extra off element here is created. That's the important one. So now if I reload the application, we still get auto logged in, but if I log out, it's gone. So now we enhanced our application to make sure we're taking advantage of the authentication status of the user. We can't visit pages we aren't allowed to visit anymore. We also make sure we clean up our front end state, but if we do everything as we should do, then we are able to log in. We're not done yet though. There's one other important thing. I wanna save my user ID as part of the meetup here. So let's do that. I'll get rid of the old meetup and I'll go back to my store for this. And in this store here, I now want to pass one extra property to my meetup when I create one. I'll name it creator ID. And here I wanna reach out to my gathers. Thankfully I can get them here too. I can extract them from this object which gets passed to an action. And from the gathers I wanna reach out to my user and get the ID which we store there. That's the ID Firebase creates for us. So now I'm storing this as part of the meetup which I store in the database. And that's something super important I wanted to ensure. I will also want to extract this if I load my meetups, of course. So here I'll add this to creator ID, object, key, and then here it's the creator ID. So with that, I'm storing this ID too and I'm extracting it. With that, I can now create new meetups. So let me copy the New York meetup URL, image URL, quickly organize a new meetup here. Check the console. Let's reload everything just to make sure everything is working as intended. So that's the New York meetup. It's taking place in New York, obviously. Let's paste the image in there. Awesome meetup. And now 
for the last time, hopefully. Let's pick a date and a time and create a meetup. Let's view it here. Now you see the creator ID, this cryptic string here, uh, starting with QP and another P. That's my user ID here. So that's this. Let's organize the second meetup queue. This Paris meetup here, I'll copy that. It's the Paris meetup taking place in Paris with the image, awesome too. And then let's pick a fitting date, 4 p.m. maybe, create the meetup, and we get this too, also with the creator ID. So that's that. If we reload this application, you see we fetch this too. This is all working fine. Now with that, I'll call this a video. And in the next videos, I wanna ensure that we can do things like register for meetups and more awesome things. See you there.